Welcome back to Fun with Fiber Pins, number four. Hey, we've done a few changes here on the layout, but uh, essentially we're still operating with just one fiber pin, as you've seen in our previous video. And it works in conjunction with our switch over here in two train operation. So if we step back a little bit, uh, we added a, a 709 lockout eliminator. So the lockout eliminator allows an engine to be safe and not run through a switch that is set against it. So if this switch is like this and this train is running, when it hits this section right here, it stops. And with the lockout eliminator, even with an AC engine, the reverse unit, um, it has enough power from a 10 ohm resistor in the lockout eliminator to keep the reverse unit from cycling. So as soon as you go back and straighten out the switch, the train takes off in the same direction and doesn't go ahead and go into neutral and reverse. So our other engine that we've been playing with is a 342 DC engine. So this DC engine is actually controlled with this number 15 um, directional rectifier, they call it. So it's basically just a rectifier. It converts the AC from the transformer into DC that goes into the track. So the AC locomotive, being it has a universal motor with essentially a wire wound uh, magnet that they use in there, and the DC engine runs on DC, it has a, a permag magnet, or they call it a permag motor, and it actually has a magnet inside the motor that allows it to run on DC. Now, if I just had this hooked up to AC, that DC engine would start vibrating and it, um, it could cause damage to it. But what's neat about this is you can have uh, this uh, rectiformer or rectifier on here and you can run both of these engines at the same time. Now what I'm finding out, this particular transformer, it's a decent transformer, but it's a 75 watt. And I'm noticing that my uh, semi-unclean uh, locomotives aren't very efficient, and uh, it's, it's hard to get a lot of juice out of a 75-watt transformer to run both of these, even though they're eh, generally smaller locomotives. So I may upgrade later to a higher wattage transformer. So the other thing that I did, just to have a little bit of extra fun, I hooked up uh, one of these later model single switch track controls. These are from the later years, probably 58 or later, uh, maybe even around 1960, uh, when they were still using this style of track and this style of switches. But it works just fine. So I have uh, a lot of automatic operation stuff to go, uh, or operating over here for you. And uh, so... What we're going to do now is something Flyer did um, in the early post-war years, mostly prior to 1950. They made this attempt to uh, do this DC power uh, by using their rectifiers. And there's a thing called a rectiformer, uh, which I may put a picture on here and show you. Um, so what they advertise in their catalogs was this. It's a um, how you can run both engines at the same time and how the traditional AC engine, you know, had to go into neutral. It was a four-step process, whereas a, a direct um, a DC engine could just go forward and backwards. And then on top of that, they advertised it to where you could have a DC engine and an AC engine on the same track. And you could make one stop. You could make one uh, go backwards to avoid a collision. 
Um, so what we're going to do is just do a little demonstration with that. And a lot of that, with this little layout, what makes it possible is just our little fiber pin right there that protects this switch and allows these two engines, generally speaking, to not crash into each other. So um, without further ado, let's take a look. And uh, I'm just going to have some fun. I might tie in a little bit of music with the video, and I hope you enjoy.